um, for coming this morning or this evening, depending on where you're at. So this is the, the last installation of our international campaign tracking series. It started over in Amaya with Frederick Warner and Daniel Tomlinson. And they talked to us about how to set up um, campaign tracking specifically for apps. Then it set sail and it came across over to Nam East where Jeff Bloomer, Jen Dungan and Andy Lungsford, they talked to us about campaign tracking again, but this time specifically for the web. And now today, uh, Gretchen and I are going to be talking to you guys about setting up and reporting a marketing channels. And um, you guys are probably like, wait, one of these things doesn't seem like the other, <laughs> but let us go one more slide and show you how it does relate. Gretchen, you want to talk to the slide? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I can't see your screen, so I didn't. Oh no! All right, we're on okay. your, your slide. <laughs> <laughs> we're on my slide. Okay, great. Hold on, let me pull up my slide. So, um, we are here. Like I said, so mark, marketing channel. Oh, hold on, I gotta pull up my script. Give me a second. I got too many windows open and not the right ones. Right. That happens. It's early. <laughs> so, uh, so I just closed it again. So, give me a second. You got it. Um, yeah, campaign tracking, as the name implies, track your campaign from email to social media to banner ads and whatever digital medium is coming next. And marketing channels track all the traffic, the campaign driven traffic and the non campaign driven traffic, non campaign traffic like direct and CEO can drive a significant share of your traffic. So let's show all of our traffic some love. And now that you've followed Frederick's Daniel's Jeff's and Jen's and Andy's advice and your campaign tracking is in a great place. This is going to make setting up your marketing channels so much easier. That's a very true statement. And I do love it how like Adobe has, I think, renamed everything except for marketing channels. <laughs> so <laughs> marketing channels, even though it's all traffic, they've yet to rename it. <laughs> but but that's OK. We'll, we'll let it go. All right. I'm going to stop sharing here for a second and flip on over to our report suite so we can walk through how to do this. OK, now let me share again. Sweet. Awesome. All right, you guys seeing the Adobe Analytics UI? Are they saying yes in the chat, Gretchen? Um, no one's replied yet. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they awesome. are. Sweet, wonderful. We all need coffee this morning. Oh, yeah, we all do. Uh, <laughs> all right. Coffee. I need coffee. To set up your marketing channels, what you'll only need to do is come into the UI click on admin and then either all admin or if you happen to see report suites in here, you can click on report suites because where you need to get is to your report suite manager. And then you'll click on the report suite that you want to add your marketing channels to and then hit edit settings, come down to marketing channels and go to marketing channel manager. So now if this is like the first time that marketing channels have been set, are going to be set up on your report suite, you'll see this auto setup screen. So this screen will just come one time. And it'll be the very first time. And what Adobe has here are some, they've pre-populated some of the most common marketing channels. And so if you use them, that's great. You can keep them, but maybe you don't have affiliates. You can just unselect this and you would come down here and hit save. And now if you don't call it natural search, if you call it like maybe organic search or something like that, we can change it on the next screen. But for now, this is a really quick way to kind of for Adobe to help you get um, your first set of marketing channels in place. All right, I'm going to be like a good cooking show and go back um, to a, a report suite that has this set up. And so if you do have marketing channels already set up or you have just hit save on that auto populate, what you'll see is this screen. So this screen will have all the channels that you we picked on our auto-populate screen there for us. 
and it's going to hold quite a few, but you're going to definitely have marketing efforts that need to be added. So to add them, you'll just come down here to the bottom right and click add channel. And this is where you can type in the name of the marketing channel that you'd like to track. Um, now, like we said before, if you don't call stuff natural search, if you call it organic, you can definitely click on it and just come in here and change it to say organic. That's not a problem. So one for sure that you'll want to add is this other campaigns. So um, the other campaign, what it will do is it'll pick up tactics that have your campaign ID in the URL, but haven't matched one of these marketing channel names above. So maybe you had like a one-off campaign that happened. Um, and so that would get caught in other campaigns because you do want to say like, hey, this traffic was sent by like our marketing efforts. Or maybe you didn't have like a campaign that maybe it runs all year, but it's like low volume. So maybe it doesn't quite reach to have reached the status of having its own channel name, but we still want to say, hey, give a tip to the hat that our campaign is, is sending this traffic. Now, a couple, a couple other things to look at on the screen before we leave is this first column, this channel ID. And it can look like it's just like the number on your row, kind of like your Excel, <laughs> but it is actually meaningful because um, in your clickstream data, so the data that you know you feed out of Adobe Analytics into like your data lake, in that clickstream data, the channel ID is what's going to be used and not the channel name. So when you're looking at your clickstream data, you won't see email, you would see four. So it is an important number to know. <laughs> Next, let's look at our enable column. So this enable column, you see they're all checked because we're going to use all of them. But if there is one that you end up not using, like maybe you no longer do podcasts, you can unclick it. And that's the closest you're going to get to deleting it. So there's no delete, but you can uncheck the enabled button. Um, now, you can have up to 25. So you can hit this ad channel up to 25. And then once you need that 26 marketing channel, that's where you really need to come back and look at stuff to say, hey, do I really need all of these? Has one of them stopped? Or maybe can I combine some of them? Um, but 25 is quite a few. So you have, a, you have a little bit before you have to start making some hard decisions. Um, and one thing to know when you do start making those hard decisions is you could change the name. So maybe, maybe TV, we're like, okay, it's no longer TV. Like we set up TV in January and from January to now it was running TV, but now we want to name it TikTok. So we change this name to TikTok, TikTok. Now that name, TikTok, is actually going to span over all the data that you collected since January. So even though it was TV back in January till the day, the title will say TikTok, but the data will be TV data. And then going forward, you would just have TikTok data. So that's something to keep in mind um, here that when you change the name, the name itself is, is retroactive, but your data could kind of be a mismatch to it. I know that sounds like a bummer deal, but but Gretchen and I have a way to kind of work around that <laughs> coming up later. Awesome. So once we have all of our buckets named, oops, sorry, I forgot one more thing, the override last touch channel column, then we can move on. So the reason to check this would be to allow specific tactics to uh, maintain the credit as the last channel the person used to get to your website. And you see like a majority of these are checked. So that's <laughs> most of them are there. It's just the kind of, I call them like unintentional channels, like your direct, um, internal and referring domain. Those, um, they're not like your marketing ones. There wasn't like an effort put behind those. So those are three that you usually see the override last touch channel um, unchecked. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here. I'm gonna interject. Yeah. One, does unchecking a channel impact historical data? You can uncheck it here. And then you would have to, um, then the marketing channel rules wouldn't be there. So the data would still be there. I'd have it's to go see. Change, it's not going to change anything historically. It's, you just won't have anything new go into that channel. Right. You got it. Right. Much more and, distinctly than I said it. Yeah. <laughs> and the other question was, you wanted to show your definition of other. Oh, yeah. Okay. So other campaigns. 
perfect lead in. Oh my gosh, pay that person because they just did, gave a great lead in for me. So let's go over and look at that other campaign. <laughs> So if we go over, we're going to click right here. It says marketing channel processing rules. So here we've, we've made all, all of our buckets. I call them buckets instead of channel names. I think it just is fun. So we have our buckets. So now we need to go tell Adobe how to put traffic into these buckets. Um, and so inner marketing channel processing rules. And so with marketing channel processing rules, as soon as your traffic matches one of these rules, Adobe is going to classify it as that. And so that's good to know because it's kind of different than how like our general processing rules work. General processing rules, like every single one of your processing rules is evaluated and can act on your data. But with marking channels, as soon as your data matches one of the rules that we'll look at, it stops. It's like, all right, this is what I'm at. And it doesn't fall through the rest of it. And so that's why um, Adobe has given some recommendations on how to start off. And their recommendations is to start off with paid search and natural search. So with paid search, our rule is going to say um, when all, so you can either say all or any. So when there's just one rule, it will always say all. But if you have two rules, you can pick any, which means ors, or all, which means ands. And so in this case, we're going to say if the traffic matches paid search detection, and I'll show you where we set that, but at a high level, what matches page search detection is, it means that the traffic is coming from a known search engine and it has your campaign tracking ID on it. So like most campaign tracking IDs I've seen are like CID or maybe campaign ID spelled all out, or maybe you use like UTM underscore campaign. So those would be, those would be that's what matches page search detection, known search engine plus your URL parameter. And that's usually good enough, but you can do belt and suspenders, all about belt and suspenders and just say, hey, and that campaign tracking code, it's going to start with PS or whatever yours starts with, you know, PS underscore PS colon. And this is where, um, you know, that everything that you've talked about with Frederick and Daniel and Jeff and Jen and Andy about having consistent naming conventions and making sure like all your marketing efforts have the campaign ID. This is where they're coming in super handy because marketing channels rely very, very heavily on, on that consistency that you guys have set up from the previous two um, AAUG meetings. And so if, if your traffic matches these two things, then Adobe's like, okay, I'm going to put you in that paid search bucket, the one that we just made. And for the detail, so at a high level, I'll call you paid search. And then for a little bit more detail, we're going to say, hey, put that tracking code as the more detail in there. And Gretchen's going to go about later, talk about how you can report on both of these items. So that's paid search. And then for natural search, it's very similar. It says mat matches natural search detection. And so what that means, it means like your traffic's coming from a known search engine, but this time it doesn't have that CID or it doesn't have your campaign URL parameter on it. And if it matches that, then Adobe's going to put it in our natural search bucket. And here we've picked search engine. You will see like you have search engine plus search keyword. This, this keywords, um, oh man, this is many, many years ago when like all the searches went to secure searches like HTTPS. They've really like stopped sending that search engine keyword. So it just kind of garbles up the data. Like sometimes it's like very small, it's there. And so <clears throat> it's just cleaner to, I think, to pick the search engine itself as the detail for your natural search. So those are the first two. Now this next chunk from three down to 11, this is comp all of your marketing, like all the stuff that's going to have your campaign IDs, like that goes next. Because once again, the order is important. And so once again, this is where having that consistency that was talked about um, with Jeff and Jen, making sure that all of it from apps that Jeff or that Frederick and Daniel talked about to your web, that all of it has that tracking in place is going to be fantastic. Because here what we're going to say is we're going to say, hey, if our if there's a campaign tracking code and it starts with, in this case, CSEs as our comp comparison shopping then call it compare, put it in the comparison shopping bucket and put that campaign tracking code as our detail. And you're going to see this format for all of our 
um, buckets that are based off your campaigns. So we'll open up like podcasts, for example. So you see the same thing. We're looking specifically at the campaign tracking code and what it starts with. And maybe it's not a starts with maybe where your consistent thing is, is more in the middle. So maybe it's more of a contains, but this is once again, where your consistency comes in. And once, and if it matches, so if Dobie says sees the traffic coming in with the campaign tracking code that starts with PD, we're like, oh, this is podcast. So they'll put in your podcast bucket. Once again, we're going to grab that campaign tracking code and put that as like the detail affiliated to it. Now getting down to the other campaign. So the great lead in, woo, here we are. So the other campaign, as you see, it's the very last item in our campaign bucket. So all this stuff before it, we had specific, you know, we were looking for a specific your um, value in your campaign tracking code. But now we come down here to this other and we're like, hey, once again, we want to make sure all of our campaigns are getting credit for driving the traffic, even if it is just like a one off or it's smaller, you know, it didn't qualify to have its own bucket. And that's where this other campaign comes into play. And the rule is slightly different where we're just saying, say, hey, is there a campaign tracking code? Like, do we have that URL in our URL or that URL parameter in our URL? And if so, like, so here we just say, does it exist? We don't care what it has because it could be lots of small campaigns, maybe. So you don't want to list them all out here. You just want to say, does it exist? And if it does, then we can put it in the other campaign bucket. And once again, we would grab that campaign tracking code value and put it as the detail. And this is a really great one um, because you can't keep an eye on things because maybe a campaign that's started as small, maybe now it is getting really big and maybe it does, you know, uh, maybe it does, should get its own bucket. So yeah, this is where you do the other campaigns and this is how that rule would be set up. Now the last four, so now we've done all of our, our tracking, all, all of our campaigns items. Um, the next four are kind of just to make sure that we're accounting for all the traffic. Because with marketing general rules, you do want to have all your traffic accounted for. And here you see the next one is social networks. So this social networks is different than our social campaigns up here. So when you're doing a social campaign, you know to put on your URL parameter, you know, of CID equals, you know, social colon, Facebook colon, you know, whatever your naming convention is. But there could be some traffic coming from social networks, like from Twitter, because like maybe Gretchen read your blog and she's like, this is a great blog. And she puts it out on Twitter to a link saying, hey, read this awesome blog. Well, Gretchen's not going to know your, you know, campaign tracking <laughs> code nomenclature. So that's just going to be coming from Twitter to your website. And so that's where like that's the kind of stuff that would get caught in your social networks. But once again, it's important. It gets caught in social networks versus up here, because number one, it doesn't have that campaign tracking code. But if we had social networks above social campaigns, then all of your social stuff would go into social networks. Because remember, it starts at the top and as soon as it matches, it goes there. So make sure you have your campaign above social networks. And by default, Adobe will have some social networks in here. Um, but if you Google, um, I'm going to put it in quotes here, Adobe Analytics list of social networks. So those five words, Adobe Analytics list of social networks. Um, you will, the very first re um, result will be like an article that has like 157. <laughs> so way more social networks than I even knew existed and I even use, but you can just easily copy and paste them and put them in here. Um, and that way you can have every last one ever covered. Now on this, for the social networks, we are looking at a few different things. We're looking at the referring root domain and it's equaling what we copy and pasted, or you can stick with what Adobe puts here by default. Either way is fine. And then once again, we're putting it in our social network bucket. And here, now for our details about it, we're gonna take the whole entire referring domain. So we're just looking at the root originally but we'll take the whole entire referring domain as our um, detailed value. And then our last three are kind of like the sponges. They soak up the last bit of, let me close these up so I can get a little bit higher. The last bit of our traffic, we have internal, direct, and referring domains. So with our internal, it's going to say it matches internal URL filters. So the internal URL filters you guys have set up or um, when you first created your report suite <laughs> and it, it says, it tells Adobe what your website is. So 
if like if your website is clear cover or hallmark.com or search discovery like you put your url and they're saying hey this is our website and now but there are sometimes you need to put more like you'll put like paypal in there um for instance because like hallmark for example they have an e-commerce checkout and at one point you can be like yeah i want to pay with paypal and so we'll when you select that, it will pop you down to PayPal so you can choose your payment option, but then you'll come back up to Hallmark to finish, you know, your purchase to see your order confirmation. And so we actually put PayPal as an internal URL filter because you don't want PayPal looking like your number one referrer when really it's just your payment method. <laughs> so, um, so you should have these set up already. Um, and so that's what it's just saying, like, hey, if the referrer matches our internal URL filters that we have set as like our site, then we're going to bucket it as internal. Now, something here that's different that we haven't seen on the other rules is here it says is first page of visit. And so marketing channels, this will run on every single one of the, the hits into coming into Adobe Analytics. And so on this with, with the other ones, your, your paid search, your natural search, your campaigns, those all those items that we looked at before, usually are only going to be on your first page. Right? Um, you're not going to have um, your campaign tracking inside your site. You may have internal campaign tracking, but you're using a different URL parameter, probably like an ICID. Um, so here we do need to call out saying, hey, only look at this though on the first page of the visit. So if it's the first page of the visit and it matches your internal URL filter, we'll call it internal and we'll call it page. And so this could happen, like I said, either with that PayPal kind of scenario or, you know, the good old scenario of someone's on your website, they leave to run an errand, they come back 45 minutes later, and then they pick up again. So that would also look like internal. And then we have direct. So direct would be, there's no referrer. And once again, it's the first page of the visit. And if that's the case, you know, if that's what, if your traffic matches that, then Adobe will call it direct. And here our channel value will be page because um, that's kind of like the most information we have is like, hey, you came direct to our site. What was that page that you directly came to? And then last but not least, we have referring domains. And so this is, uh, this these last three should make sure that all your traffic is counted for because of this last one, we're saying, hey, you came from somewhere. So direct, you had no referrer. Here you, you have a referrer. <laughs> so with these last couple, we should have all the traffic accounted for. And so, um, you know, if it's you have a referring domain, it's not empty and it doesn't match your internal URL filters, let's bucket it as a referring domain. And then we'll just take that referring domain as our, our detailed data. So that is how now we initially set up our buckets. And then this is how Adobe understands the logic to fill the buckets. We did say at this top one that we wanted to look at that, um, matches page search. And so how you get there is you come up to edit settings, general, and then you come down to page search detection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when this loads, you will see uh, that the page search detection is not only used for uh, the marketing channels, it's used for some other reports as well. So like your paid search engines, the natural search engines. So some of those reports were uh, reports you found in like the old school reports and reports and analytics sections of, um, of your UI. And so on this, what you would do is you come in here and you can be super specific. Like you can pick a specific search engine. So when it says it comes from a known search engine, we got quite a few known search engine here for Adobe. And so what I've always just gone with all because where I've been, our, our marketing efforts have been the same across you know, your search engine. We didn't change it per search engine. So you can keep all. And then your query string contains. And so this is where you would put like your CID or campaign ID all written out or like your UTM underscore campaign. So whatever URL parameter that you're using on your paid search, that's what would go here. And so here you see one has already been put in here of CID. And so this is, it's good to know it's, you know, with your URL parameters, it would be like www.searchdiscovery.com, like question mark, CID equals paid search underscore Google. And so what's important is that CID part. 
like what it equals, like equals PS underscore Google. For this right here, that's not what we care about. We care about that first piece, that CID or the campaign ID. And there is a caveat that this is case sensitive, it says here. So, you know, hopefully you listened to the previous two uh, webinars where they talked about consistency. And so hopefully you have some uh, stuff in place where the CID is probably always lowercase. But maybe, maybe if you're worried, once again, we can do belt and suspenders. If you think like CID might come across as uppercase, you can do more. So they'll treat these as ORs. So you could say it's lowercase CID, or you could do the same thing, but this time put capital CID all the way across. So yeah, so that's how you set up so to tell Adobe. It comes from a known search engine, and it has my URL parameter. So in this case, it'll look for CID. And then one last thing I wanted to show here before I hand it over to Gretchen for reporting is under marketing channels, you do have this marketing channel expiration. And it's important to look at because the expiration for marketing channels is a little bit different than for eBars. So with marketing channels, it is, it's by default set to 30 days of inactivity for the visitor engagement period. And this is important to know because this is rolling. So this 30 days will restart. So like if I come to the website today, your website today, my marketing channels will start doing my 30 days. And then if I come back on Friday, it will reset me to one. So it doesn't just keep me going for, for 30 straight days. That's more like what the eBar would do. If you set an eBar to 30 days, it'll just go, okay, 30 days, we're done. But with marketing channels, it will restart me over every time I come back. So um, that's just an important little tidbit to know. Awesome. So I think I've covered everything. So, so now we have it all set up. Everything's set up. We're collecting data. And now Gretchen is going to show you how to report on this. So Gretchen, I'll stop sharing and you can share your screen, show your awesome reports. Okay, awesome. So now that we have, first of all, can you see my screen? I got you. Okay. Um, now that we have all that great data that Sarah showed you how to set up between having awesome marketing channel, marketing tracking codes. So let's talk about how we're going to use all that data. So, um, so let's, um, so first of all, it's super important to have consensus from your marketing partners in your marketing channel setup. So, you know, as you know, the Adobe admin, don't just go out there willy nilly and make the marketing channels how you think are best. Talk to your marketing partners, make sure that they understand where they're going to see their data. And marketing channels will only work if there is consistent tagging from your marketing partners, which they're already experts as from our previous presentations. So consistent tagging makes everything easier for both marketing channels and campaign reports. So take a look at your current setup that you have right now in your marketing channels and identify if any changes need to be made. If you make changes, uh, verify them. Usually you have to wait for the next day because this is a process, so you're not gonna see it right away. You may have, it may be there in a few hours, um, but uh, just go in there and, you know, is this what you meant to have happen or not? So uh, if you see dramatic changes in your marketing channel after you've made the changes, just make sure that's really what you wanted to do. So it's always better for you to find the issue before a marketing partner <laughs> does, you know, just to keep, uh, you know, confidence in A, your Adobe data and B, in yourself as the analyst. It's okay to do a mea culpa. We, you know, one's perfect. We've all messed up marketing channels. Uh, some of us more than once. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> and that would be me. So, <laughs> so uh, just make sure, you know, everything works better with your consistent uh, marketing channels. So mark tracking codes. And then marketing channels are not the same as campaign reporting. And you're going to want to use both. You just need to be super consistent. Um, consistent in where you're using them. So marketing channels are inclusive of your own. So all of your tracking codes, your organic and earned tactics, they show the interplay of all tactics. Well, our campaign reporting will only show the own tactics. Organic can be a huge contributor of uh, both traffic and conversions and earned 
can also drive traffic when posts go viral. So SEO and social partners will always be great champions of your marketing channels um, since their contributions will show up in marketing channels and not campaign reports. Um, executives also really like marketing channel reports because they can get a really concise view of all the tactics without uh, multiple tactics claiming credit. And just remember to just never confuse attribution with incrementality. Um, it's very important. Um, campaign reports still very much have their place, so you don't have to um, have your marketing partners change what they're doing. They will still want to use campaign reports because they're perfect for a specific tactic in campaign reporting mm -hmm. and can take advantage of the classifications that you hopefully have in place already with your um, tracking code. So whether that is, you know, uploading data or using the rule builder, just kind of piece apart all of the different pieces of your tracking code. Um, classifications are a beautiful thing and they can be used for more than just your tracking codes. They'll be used for marketing channels and that's a sneak peek to what we have going on later. So, <laughs> and campaign reporting is also a better fit when you've integrated your search and display partners and you're importing metrics like impressions in addition to the standard uh, Adobe metrics. Just be ready to answer the questions when people say my tactic report shows like $100,000 in revenue and this marketing channel only shows $90,000 in revenue. You can show how that $10,000, you know, went to organic or earned tactics instead of the owned. And uh, so marketing channels and campaign reports will always trend in the same direction, but they're never going to match. Uh, and when sharing numbers, just, you know, be clear of the sources of the data. Is it a campaign report or a marketing channel report? Like I say, both are right. They're just going to, you want to use them in different tactics in different places. So, and use the right breakdowns when looking at marketing channels. Use marketing channel detail instead of campaign, because if you use this campaign, you're going to get that unspecified bucket. Um, so the values in that marketing channel detail are determined in the setup process where Sarah showed you. So, and this is one place where the difference in expiration methods that Sarah mentioned can come into play. So for example, someone who came on a display ad four months ago and has visited the site via direct once a month since then, marketing channels will have that traffic still attributed to, dis to the display ad. Well, the campaign report, that mm -hmm. expiration date you have is enforced. So you won't see that, you know, all those subsequent visits uh, attributed to that display. So very important to keep in mind. So um, just make sure when you're using marketing channels, you're using marketing channel details. And so, and then, or the classifications that you'll have set up. So, um, awesome. and then uh, tactic owners, you know, don't necessarily like sharing credit, you know, with uh, <laughs> your organic or earned um, channels, but you know, it's an, it's the truth. It takes a village to get traffic to <laughs> <laughs> Love it. your website. Um, another thing to take a look at is your attribution methods. You know, Adobe has put a lot of work. There's some really cool, slick things you can do with attribution. Um, you know, marketing channels will default to last touch attribution. There's nothing wrong with still using first or last attribution. But, you know, I encourage you guys to do some exploration with the different attribution methods and pick one that you like and use that consistently. No cherry picking attribution methods. <laughs> oh, come on. It's a campaign, okay? We have to, you, um, you know, just stick to one model or uh, agree on when we look at this tactic, we use this model or this tactic, we're going to use this mm -hmm. model. You know, sometimes there may not be a lot of difference. Like in this example, there's not necessarily a lot of difference. You know, there is a first touch, um, but you can see here, and Adobe has made it super easy to go in and see. So I will go into uh, Adobe here. So they have, um, Again, looking here, they have this really cool attribution panel. You just go into your panels, attribution, 
and uh, where did I go? I went too far down. And you could just say, what's my metric I want to use? What channel do I want to break it out? You don't have to break. You can use this with any metric and you can use this with any dimension. It doesn't have to be marketing channel. It can be anything. Um, so get creative. You can pick the models you want to look at your look back window and hit build. And then Adobe does all the work for you. It's amazing. So you can see and you can compare side by side, you know, last touch, first touch, linear U shape. And here again, take advantage of making it as clear as possible, especially when you've got multiple, you know, they all say online orders, people will get confused. So change it and uh, make it very clear U shaped what these different models mean. So you can see where the different buckets and how things change. And it'll give you the chart, it'll give you the table, give you a nice little Venn diagram. Again, edit your labels here and shorten that name so people can actually read it. <laughs> and all this cool stuff for you autom automatically. Ah, I like, love it. I, it's just, that is pretty cool. So make sure that you play around with that learn about it, and then decide on the model that works best for you and your company and kind of stick with it. Um, but make sure to just go back and look at that, look at those models, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, at least once a year, if you have a significant changes in tactics, significant changes in budget, you might want to go back and, and look at your models and see if there's anything you need to change. Um, another cool thing you can do is use calculated metrics um, for your attribution models. So if you have like, if you're going to pick an attribution model, you can create the calculated metric and that will always have that uh, attribution method applied and make those kind of your default primary metrics that you're using. And just make sure to call out when you're not using that primary attribution model, everyone has agreed it. So they understand why the numbers are different. Again, take advantage of the text fields and workspace description and edit labels to highlight the different attribution models. Use that bright red color to kind of um, get everyone's attention. So you can do that again, going back to here. So, you know, when you're adding an order, if I want to do online orders, oops, let me go back down here. Look yeah. at you with your cool dark mode. No. You see my screen, you're gonna see white mode. <laughs> um, so you all you have to do here oops, is hit the icon and he you click that non-default attribution, which like I said always defaults to last touch, and pick whatever one you want here, and you can make it custom, you can make some rules. So your starter is always essentially first touch player, anything in the middle. And your closer will be, you know, the last touch. So if you have multiple um, tactics kind of assigned with the same campaign, like they, you know, think about your funnel when you use your display or social, those are kind of upper funnels. So that those may call those may benefit from, you know, being credited as a starter, you know, searches that always at such a great closer. So, you know, think about how you want to apply that and then you can it'll see there. You know, you'll it'll also show you which uh, attribution model you have there. So, and just like the great Eric Matasoff says, like when in doubt, right click because you can do so much stuff with your right click, right? Yeah. In here. So, um, just and then just periodically, like I said, review them to make sure your primary method is still your best fit and review like your last touch channels that have higher discounts or costs by your first touch or middle to see if you still need to invest in those tactics. So think about, you know, which um, of your cost of acquisition, you know, which of your channels are really that super high cost. And if, you know, if there are a lot of those high cost, high cost closing um, campaigns, you know, do you need to invest them if you would have maybe potentially gotten them with kind of a lower cost tactic? Um, 
use uh, and then use different attribution models to create calculated metrics so you can combine attribution models within a single calculated uh, metric so Trevor Paulson and we've um, has a super awesome uh, video that's out there on the Adobe Analytics YouTube video uh, channel that will talk about how you can build kind of um, acquisition and close rates and, and, and everything like that. So there are so many things you can do with multiple attribution models and calculated metrics. Um, so, and it's just so nice that Adobe has done so much of this for you, you know, having to do the old fashioned campaign stacking was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like to talk about those days. Um, so um, just go out there and have fun with what you can do out there. Awesome. Sweet. Gretchen, do you want to keep sharing? Yeah, I'll keep sharing. Sure. All right, cool. Because I can talk through this if you want to yeah, show it off. And I do see like um, this is getting recorded. So we will post it out on our Adobe yeah. Analyt or Adobe user group channel. Yeah. Adobe YouTube channel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this link there. Awesome. Yeah, and in the chat for everyone awesome so yeah if you want to click and we open up this article because so this is like this is funny so gretchen and i everything that we've talked about is how we have done our lives for many 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 years <laughs> and now now comes along this article and so yeah the, the gretchen is showing it here but if yeah i would love it if you guys opened it up as well because it's kind of talking about different ways of setting up marketing channels um and what adobe is saying here is maybe you know with the advent of cja so customer journey analytics um and maybe even some of the attribution iq stuff that there could be a different way to capture this data and so as we go th down through here like the best practice number one leverage attribution iq we've done that so gretchen just talked a whole lot about that so number one is kind of the same and so Gretchen, if you want to scroll on down to the next best practice, um, number two, it talks about not having direct or not having that session refresh. And so session refresh, we called it internal when we talked about it earlier today. And so it's saying, hey, best practice number two, don't, don't, don't track that stuff. And so I'm just like, wow, like that kind of rubs me the wrong way because yes, with, that hurts. I know with marketing channels, that was our one place that we could look at all of our traffic together and so while i can understand like direct and session refresh they're not mark you know they're not, they're not marketing they're not marketing but they're still sending you traffic so this one i'm like oh that's an interesting take you know and so now i'm like hmm now if you scroll down to number three it says enable override last touch channel for all channels and like we talked about, for the majority of it, they are checked. The ones that weren't checked were direct and session refresh. But now, like in that previous little rule, they said, get rid of those two. Um, and on this one, they did keep referring domains and they did check it. So that one, like two and three are kind of mm, different. And then four real, so two and three really like kind of land blast what we do with marketing channels. And then number four, is really crazy. It says minimize your visitor engagement period to one day. So by default, when you go there, it'll be 30 days. And here in this article, it's like, no, do one. And actually one is the smallest you can do with marketing channels. Like if you try to put zero, it's funny. If you put zero and save it, Adobe will actually check the never. <laughs> so it does like the opposite. So if you're trying to say, hey, don't ever hold this data, it'll say, I will hold this data forever. <laughs> um, and so when we're, and then like the fifth rule is just a housekeeping one, which rule number five just applies to life in general, like keep your stuff clean. But the, the other two, the other three rules, like where they said, don't track all your traffic, um, well, check all of them, and but then make your visitor expiration to be one day. I'm like, wow, that really, really changes my view of life. And so I don't think I'm quite ready. And I don't think Gretchen is quite ready either. So Gretchen, if you wanted to hop back over to that PowerPoint, what yeah. Gretchen and I are going to do is we're going to we're going to look into it. So our thoughts and we'd love to kind of hear from you guys, too. I know we just showed you this article, so you might still be noodling on stuff. But what Gretchen and I are going to do 
is we are going to keep our marketing channels as is. Uh, and we're going to keep our SDAT campaign variable as is. But we do find this article interesting. And so I think we all love new stuff. That's why we're in this uh, technology kind of industry. We're going to set up an EVAR that aligns with what this article is saying. So we're going to set up an EVAR that has the allocation of most recent, which would be last. Um, we're going to set the expire. Like with EVARs, you can pick a custom, like the word is actually custom. And when you pick that, it will pop open a little, you know, slide some stuff to the side of it where you can say like one day, one week, one hour, um, one minute. I can't remember. It gets pretty granular. <laughs> but we'll go with the one day. Um, and then you can still, in this EVAR, like it would still... It's, it would just capture your campaign tracking. So it'd be much like your SDOT campaign variable. So however you're populating your SDOT campaign is how you'd populate this EVAR. Um, and then you could throw in that referring domains if you wanted. But they're, by saying don't do direct and don't do internal, you're pretty much just saying capture you know, your, pay, your campaign stuff. <laughs> and then you can just use classifications to bucket it. So I think this is an interesting article. It uh, definitely shakes my foundations. <laughs> But I'm going to, we're going to, Gretchen and I are going to ease our way into it. And maybe you guys could ease your way into it as well. And um, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. our and you, you can, because like when you're using, like doing all those uh, metrics and you can select your attribution method, you can select your look back method, which is why you can just use this one day one and get away with it. So you can make one that's 30 days or two weeks or six months by, you know, in your calculate metric or when you change that attribution uh, method or use that non-default attribution you so yeah. not everything will be just one day you it's just like now you have the freedom to use whatever day you want and you just pick it at the time you're using it Gretchen would you mind dumping the actual whole URL into the link into the chat too Tim is saying like our yeah. the shortened link his uh, firewall is not liking it sure. and then yeah. Yeah, there's a comment about the, um, the intelligent tracking prevention ITP will limit our view range to seven days, question mark. And yeah, definitely with with um, Apple Safari, they are, whether it's a third party cookie or even a first party cookie. So, you know, Safari is coming down on first party cookies as well. And if your first party cookie is written by JavaScript, which that's how, you know, analytics and a lot of people write their cookies it's those JavaScript cookies that have that seven day expiry. Like even if you say this cookie should last a year, Safari's gonna be like, nope, it's lasting seven days because you wrote it with JavaScript. If you write it from the server, so like, you know, um, then, then Safari will say, okay, I'll let it last a year. So when you can see that a server is setting a cookie, like it's like when you look at your network tab and you look at your your analytics call you can see in the headers it will say like set cookie and that's those are cookies that your server is setting so that's a legal way so hans i promise i'm not getting you in like an orange prison jumpsuit but that's a legal way where you can get around that seven day first party cookie um kind of constraint because it's because it's written by javascript if you rewrite um your like you don't have to rewrite all your cookies, but like some of the most important ones, <laughs> you know, like your inbox cookie, your ECID, any of those first party cookies that you want to truly, that are written by JavaScript that you want to live longer than seven days, um, you can rewrite them that way. Uh -huh. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. So classifications. Okay. So, all right. Um, it's just magic, just, folks. Magic. Can I uh, a steal screen from you? Yes, you can. All right, awesome. So we'll hop in to um, share. All right. So all our, you know, most of our lives, we've been talking about like, hey, marketing channels are not retroactive, which that's a true statement. So that statement is still true. But we do have, if you go back to your edits, oh, and hopefully everybody can see my screen. Gretchen, let me know if people are saying they can't see anything. I'll continue until you tell me to stop. Okay. If you go to edit settings and then marketing channels and then go to your marketing channel classifications, this is where you can say, hey, I want to have classification. So this is the same as like, you know, if you go to your your traffic and then put your classifications or your conversions to put your classifications on e-bars, 
you come into that marketing channel classification. And here, what Gretchen and I have put classifications on is our marketing channel detail. And so here you see first touch and last touch. The gorgeous thing is you just have to pick one of them and Adobe will put your classification on both of them. So like when we made it, we picked first touch and here we, you know, added, you click the little arrow to add your classification. The classification we added as marketing channel detail classification. And then instantly Adobe also put it on our last touch channel. So you'll have it on both um, flavors of it. So that's the first thing you say, hey, I'm going to have a classification. The next step is to go back up into your all admin. And I'm going to look at classification rule builder because I love that. So you could probably do importer too, but we'll go into classification rule builder. And this is the one that you use for all your classifications. And you'll make a new classification for your marketing channel detail. And in here, um, we kind of do a mix and match. We have some regex, we have some starts with. And so the beauty of this is um, it starts at the top. So there's all these little gotchas. So with classification rule builder, once again, it'll go through all of them. It'll start at the top. And so at the very top, we just have a catch all. We're like, hey, I just want to make sure that you're bucketed into something, <laughs> you know? And so we have our catch all using regex saying, hey, if there's something here, put us in the catch all. But with the classification rule builder, it will go through all your other rules. And if it matches, then it will not be in catch all anymore. It would maybe come down here and be in your email biweekly. And so what you see here is like, I haven't done all of them, this uh, just a handful so far, but for like our natural, when you look at your natural search, there's a ton that say Google, like Google, Google India, Google Singapore, that's a lot of data. And so here with our classification, we could just nicely say, hey, this is natural search Google or Yahoo. And here you see, we can have some regex where we start with TV, and it ends with a C or A or B. And so we're gonna say, hey, it's TV cable over the air or broadcast. So here, you can use all your great marketing channel rule builders. And what you'll end up making is this um, oh, wonderful data with our classification. So hopefully you guys can see my screen where we have our marketing, we have marketing channels. So here's our TV and at a high level, it's 36,000. And so this is the one that, you know, originally we said from January up to today, it captured TV, but today through to, you know, the end of the year, it's going to be TikTok. Well, this 36,000, when this TV changes to TikTok, this 36,000 of TV is still going to be there. There's nothing we can do about that. Not for the marketing channel. That's done and passed. Inner classifications. So with our classifications, we now have TV, we have over the air broadcast and cable. So not only do we have kind of a, an intermediate granularity for you, but the rules that we just looked at here in our classification rule builder, it says like, hey, you had to start with TV and you had to end with a certain letter. And so that's how this is built. Now, when TikTok comes in, TikTok's not going to start with TV. It's going to start with like TT for TikTok. And so our classification will have the right label for the right data. And then we'll add TikTok and TikTok will be here with the right data. So with our classification, we are able to kind of skirt around that. Um, non-retroactive with your data because over here in our marketing channel it will say TikTok, but it's we know it still has tv but in our classifications it's very clean and has it pulled apart and i know we're running to the end so that's where i'll leave you on that and we gretchen do you want me to show the powerpoint or do you want to show it again i can um, let you yeah i can share again awesome i'll stop so yeah lots of great stuff with classifications um and being able to not only retroactive it, but make different levels of um, granularity to report on. Uh, yeah, so here are some more great resources and I've put all these links in the chat. There's a couple of summit um, sessions from a couple of years ago. I know uh, Sarah's favorite, the OG. Yeah this blog series and then uh, the Trevor Paulson also I mentioned that and he's got several videos this is just one of them but um, you may just like look for him again um, the Adobe Analytics workspace um, YouTube channel personal favorite of mine so make sure you check that out um, and Tim I know those URLs sorry aren't going to work for you but 
if you Google like the behind every good report is good data or yeah, I put, the, I put the full URLs in oh, the, you got the, okay, in cool. the chat. So I think, I think we're good. Awesome. Um, so hopefully, it, and maybe we'll try and get them sent out to everyone in an email later as well. Awesome. So got um, check out all of these and then just uh, save the date for our next one. We'll be back in December. Um, to wrap up the year and we're super excited that we'll have our um, co-lead partner Luke on back. Um, he'll be back from his deployment. We've missed him dearly. So we're so excited that he'll be joining us and we hope that you have learned a ton with these. Um, all your questions about tracking codes and marketing channels have been answered in these um, these sessions. I mean, and even if they they probably haven't been, but there's great resources. <laughs> and, you know, we're still scratching our head every once in a while with these tracking codes and marketing channels and go, why did that happen? <laughs> no, this has been awesome. Well, thank you yeah. guys so much. I'll have a great rest of your day. See you guys. Let's see. Uh,